Saudi Arabia. Never did I imagine in my lifetime would I ever set foot in this country. First, because tourism is not allowed then, and secondly, I am not a Muslim. So I myself believe whatever stereotype those extreme news and social media's portrayal of the country. So my reality of Saudi Arabia then is just synonymous to oil, oil, and oil, and did I mention oil? Basically, the world knows that they are one of the largest producers of oil in the world. As synonymous to their oil, my reality of Saudi Arabia then is also about their cheap gold markets. As a Filipino, I've known a lot of jokes and of course it's based on the reality that if a Filipino comes from Saudi Arabia as overseas Filipino worker, they come back with their body decorated with gold. So as a kid growing up, Saudi Arabia to me is like a gold heaven. So you want to put together? Mm, no, this one's broken. Like this, okay, then yeah, like this. This is 21. Yeah, 21. Sorry. Gift for a wedding? Oh, wedding gift. Also, camels everywhere. So my first few days in Saudi Arabia, I have to go out and prove this reality of mine and to see this camel in their natural habitat. Someone really didn't truly stereotype Saudi Arabia without mentioning Arab men and their luxury cars. The fact that their country is known for their endless golden sand, extremely hot weather, and where the two holy sites of Islam is located, their Medina and Mecca, that's basically my reality of Saudi Arabia then. and synonymous as those oil and gold fortunes. My knowledge of Saudi Arabia includes that they are hostile people, that they don't have respect for their women. It is a very, very dangerous country. And there's so much more negative annotations and stereotypes that thanks to tell you what, now at least I knew and understand this country from my own experience, living in a place and actually seeing their way of life. I have seen a bit of Saudi Arabia through my own eyes and I'm telling you my own story based on my experience while living in the country. That brings me into this particular story of our road trip to Al Ula. This was September of 2019, my second year living in the country and my second city. First, we lived in Tamam and then in Jeddah. A few days on to this month, my husband found out that we will be moving to Japan. So our Al Ula trip particularly have been delayed due to the work schedule, but we pushed through it this time anyway even just for a weekend day trip as we might not have the opportunity to see this place ever. For me, it's been a greatest gift in my life to be able to travel and to see enough of the world in the way we have, but it's nothing really unless you can share it. So the plan was to leave Jeddah at sunset and to head up to Yandu that is 300 kilometers up which is the nearest town where we could stay the night before we go to Alula the next day.
After more than two hours of driving in the darkness, we are now welcomed by the Yangu street lights. But it is actually the Aramco's petroleum factory that was beaming with light for miles and miles even before you enter the city. The next morning, we wake up in Yanbu, and this is the view in our hotel overlooking the Red Sea. That's the airport there. There. Hmm. So we freshen up and we are ready to go for another 300 kilometers of long drive in to the Al Ula region of Saudi Arabia. So meanwhile, we are driving from Yandu and looking for something to eat while on the road. You must also have noticed that the roads here are so nice very spacious knowing that south is like their big trucks or big cars so they have really wide roads but the good thing is it's really smooth there's no bumps on here and also this is friday morning early in the morning so you can't see a lot of travelers so it is like only you driving around this massive country road to all the as this See out the back window. Facebook, this is what I've got to put up with. This too is Saudi Arabia. You will always get 100% of sunshine, but this beautiful clear sky against the mountains are perfect. Because in some part of the country, sandstorms always make it look so gloomy. Enjoy 
beautiful landscapes that changes every few kilometers in Grenada's. It goes on for hours though. It's not bad comparing to the driving at night in the darkness where you can see anything. This is literally a road less travel. compared to the ones in the mountain. On this part, I can't remember how long we've been driving in the wilderness. It's very long. We've seen a graveyard, I mean a car graveyard, and a sign that reminds us we are approaching to an inhabited place. Turn left onto the slip road. we see a beautiful landscapes that surrounds us we stop as much as we can I do take a lot of photographs and we give ourselves just a few moments to admire the place I really like taking photograph wherever I go so I think taking photograph is a way of sharing the joy that I find being in a places like this. Mostly there's no one there but us. It is so peaceful that you know the silence give us a special kind of intensity. What I'm showing you is just a scratch on a surface. Saudi Arabia is a massive country. There are so many places that was never been explored before. This country is like an adventurer's paradise where all of them will last to explore. So this is literally a road trip because we keep on driving and driving and driving until there's no more English sign on the road. So we are looking into the window of the past. Before us, there has been a lot of civilization that took place 
in this area. So the main purpose of the trip actually is to go and see Malay Sali or Malay Sali, which is the first world heritage site of Saudi Arabia. Madain Sali, they call it in Arabic, and Hegra by the Nabataeans who settled in the area on the first century AD. And it was the Nabataean second capital after Petra. So that was really so interesting for me. That's the reason for this trip. Madain Sali, as they call it today, was home to different tribes or people in the past. According to Quran, the Tamuds tribe settled here. But I think the most famous settlers were the Nabataeans because the rock carvings, their necropolis are still intact today just like the one in Petra. Can we stop later here?
exit towards Route 375, then keep left at the fork. So, it's really silly of me to go on a road trip without actually checking if it is open. But, of course, my friends also didn't realize that this is closed because this is not actually like a official tourist place yet. So, people can just drive into it. But, um, it was actually announced before this month that the place will be closed for But you know, I actually came prepared, as you will see, except from the part that I have to check if this area is open. Anyway, I went to a local market in Jeddah to find a very photo-worthy abaya. So I have been accompanied by four of my Filipino friends who works and live in Jeddah for decades. And I'm not going to let that effort go to waste. So. I found myself shooting on this empty Al Ula motorways between Marain Sale and Al Ula town just because I came prepared. To sum it up, I did not see the old Al Ula town. I did not see the archaeological site of the Nabataeans old city and necropolis. I did not see all of that. Since Saudi started to open up tourism, let's be optimistic, shall we? And I would say, I shall return. I suggest though to maximize your exploration when this will be open officially, take at least 4-5 to five days to give yourself enough time to explore the area properly. Our little sense of adventure kicked in. Instead of frustrations, we just immerse ourselves in admiring the beautiful ancient landscapes that Aula offers. It was wonderful sights. Truly, wild landscapes holds that sort of attraction. to find this elephant rock though and we have it all for ourselves so we take the opportunity to take as much photograph as we wanted because during this time we didn't know if we could still go back to Saudi Arabia like circumstances are we are not Muslim and also and there's no tourism visa before but now it's different but still this area here is very raw like it's just by the roadside that's why we managed to find it and then we just drove all the way in on the desert sand we were actually quite terrified because we just have the normal car we might get stuck so we just slowly went in and we have it all for ourselves it is also very important to note though that during this time it was summer in saudi arabia and the weather is ranging from 43 to 45 degrees celsius or worse it's felt even more it is really very hot that's why we really cannot stay longer exposed to the sun we really needed to go back to the shaded area because being exposed to the sun for so long will make you um, feel very dizzy if you really are not so used to the weather. 
I'm so grateful that I get to see a glimpse of this once upon a time majestic ancient city before the tourist crowd will take over. This was only a day trip but we've seen a lot, although not the close area of Marain Sali. Um, it was so convenient as well because it was only us. Head back to Jeddah for another 600 kilometer drive. So, actually, Madain Sali or Al Ula town is here to Petra in Jordan than in Jeddah. Or a bit because Petra in Jordan is only 500 kilometer from uh, here in Madain Sali and it's 600 kilometer away to Jeddah. <laughs> Looks like this looks like this is in them. These are old, old houses. Ruined.
Tapuan in Alula town for lunch before we drove back to Jeddah. And we stumbled upon this Indian Next shop. The only shop open at Friday. Continue for one kilometer. This was, I think, 100 real or something. Yeah, I know it's quite pricey for the place, but it is actually a lot. Uh, they gave us everything. They did not understand our order. So they gave us like mutton, they gave us beef, chicken, and fish, everything. That's why uh, it's quite a lot. Speaking of cost, so I estimated we spent around 480 or more or less. Our drive back home was a pleasant one as it was daytime. So we have seen a lot like camels, 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 and camels. So I've googled how long can camel last without drinking water and camel can go up to seven months in the desert. Seven months in the desert without drinking water. When a camel finally does find water, he can drink up to 40 gallons in one go. So that's 148 liters in one go. Another part of the trip back home to Jeddah is like our private view of the transported camel. This took for a while, actually. We followed this truck for quite some time. Can you spot the curious one?
can also travel up to 40 miles per hour. 40 miles per hour. It's the same as race horse. your favorite favorite saying is when will we be divorced <laughs> <laughs> it's saying it's a question to ask the woman is going to be Travel is my passion, but telling the real story is my purpose. That's why photography and videography really fascinates me as it allows me to create my own raw and, and choreographed story. I think people need to see it the way I experience it. There are a lot. From the distance, there are thousands of camels on this area. If you're looking at 
at your screen on the right, at the end of the desert is the Red Sea. Saudi Arabia is synonymous to oil, 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 and oil. We are driving on it now for miles and miles and miles, and it's just all petroleum refineries. For I don't know how many kilometers. About 130 kilometers before Jeddah city center is the newly built King Abdullah Economic City or Kaek, which we attempted to go for dinner, but it was so big that we got lost. We were circling the massive area for almost two hours. We cannot find the commercial place. There's so much in that massive place or Kaek, like factories, warehouses, universities, and exclusive villages. So, you know, one fun fact about Saudi, everything seems supersized, all of it. There are resorts, we've seen it, but we cannot find the area for restaurants and also there should be a Hyperloop train station which we also didn't have time to explore. More than two years, and never did I felt unrespected as a woman, not even once. 
Having said that, of course, there are many unfortunate events and stories that happen here as well. But which country does not? In this day and age, we should use our technologies to our advantage, which is to learn and educate ourselves. Each country have their own laws, rules, regulations, and cultures that is part of their identity. We should respect that. So I'm showing you this is one of our favorite restaurant or spot in Jeddah. That tower there is soon to be the highest tower in the world and I think the construction is stopped so I'm not sure when it will be finished. In this vlog, my hope is to tell a positive story and wish that others may take this as a precursor that there are more in Saudi Arabia than those you only see and hear on extreme news and social medias.